Damien leans his head back, his skull connecting painfully with the iridescent linoleum mural lining the bathroom wall above and around the toilet. He lets out a steady breath, the thick air smoothly gliding across his vocal cords, the sprawling leaves of the potted aloe vera plant gracing the corner of the table on the opposite side of the room slowly come into focus. Damien reaches for the base of the small UV lamp hanging over the top of the plant, his finger clumsily flipping the switch and bathing the leaves in bright white light. He sits back and begins counting down from 60, studying the scene before him. Another wave of anxiety rises within him. He shakes his head and wipes the cold sweat from his brow, scolding himself for taking the hits from Sam's joint. He had figured his reaction to THC would be like everyone else's, but alas, the last hour and a half, in his estimation, had been nothing but one panic-inducing hallucination and paranoid delusion after another. The worst of all of them hit just after a particularly deep draw. Without any warning whatsoever, he felt as though his very consciousness had split itself in half, with his former self's face and brain latched to his own like tumors, and yet looking out at the world through the same pair of bloodshot eyes. Your life is over, the other Damien said. You're a monster. You'll kill just like they all do. And you won't be able to stop yourself. Look at you. You can't even stop me. Although Damien intuitively knew it was all just a trick of the mind, he couldn't help but feel as though it was real on some ethereal level. The moment that final draw began to kick in, Damien leapt to his feet and headed for the bathroom, the voice practically screaming in his ears. Three, two, one. Damien sighs in abject relief as the memory of switching on the light vividly replays over and over again in his mind, his short-term memory finally showing signs of recovery. He slowly gets to his feet and moves toward the door. He turns the handle. Lauren bursts into the bathroom at blistering speed, driving the edge of the door directly into Damien's forehead. Ugh, finally! How can someone need that much time just to take a shit? She shoves Damien over the threshold without a second thought as he clutches his pounding head. He withdraws his fingers, surprised at the lack of blood. Forgive him! He was high as a kite! I know! Lauren unceremoniously kicks the door closed behind her, rattling the windows on the far end of the suite. Damien stumbles into the living room and finds Sam lazily sprawled across the sofa. Wow, she acts quite differently compared to when I first met her. Eh, don't worry. Toreador stuff. So, get ready. We're going to that bar in half an hour. Dude, I just woke up from a hangover. So? You still have vampire. You'll recover in no time. Sam dismissively waves his hand and launches his legs over the back of the sofa, propelling himself forward. He turns his attention to the hallway behind Damien. Yo, Derek, have you noticed any police activity near the bar? Nope. It's as dead as it could be. Shannon rounds the corner, pulling a lavender athletic hoodie over her jet black sports bra. Should I come with you? No need. We should be fine. I don't think anyone will attack us. But if they do, my alchemy should help. Damien turns back to Sam, perplexed. Alchemy? Thinbloods have a special type of alchemy, fittingly called Thinblood Alchemy. It lets us create potions that can disarm our opponents, make others violently ill, eh, amongst various other effects. Nice. Is there any catch to it? Except that the materials needed are sometimes fucking hard to get. No, not really. I see. What potions are you taking with you then? Sam considers the question for a moment. He walks into the kitchen and kneels down, pushing open the door to the cabinet just to the right of the stove. He withdraws a rugged utility belt equipped with several vials of oddly colored fluids. Eh, let's see. I got a couple of invisibility potions and some freezer fluid. Freezer fluid? Are you still high? No, no, just insane. Damien snorts. What does it do? It makes a vampire lethargic. And you're taking one of them with you to a small investigation? You're right. No need for that. It might be a little over the top. The disarming potion should do fine on their own. Sam shrugs and plucks two vials from the belt. He tests the staying power of the corks with his thumb and gently places the vials back in the cabinet. Okay, you ready? Damien rolls his eyes and shakes his head in amusement. So much for half an hour, Mr. I'm not high anymore. Sam and Damien walk side by side alongside the Schleinufer toward the bar, keeping a generous distance between themselves and the surprisingly busy road. A sleek sports car approaches the pair from behind, its piercing blue headlights casting their shadows across the frosty grass. 
The driver, seemingly intent on showing his ass, punches the accelerator as he races by. Damien instinctively jumps away from the road. Sam catches him, tightly wrapping his fingers around the fledgling's shoulders. Damien glances up sheepishly, his cheeks burning with embarrassment. Sam greets him with a casual smirk, his emerald eyes shining. Damien quickly rights himself and sets to work awkwardly sweeping imaginary lint from his overcoat. Sam shoves his hands into the pockets of his own coat and pointedly averts his gaze, his incisors threatening to cut into his bottom lip. He nods toward the darkened establishment along the riverfront. So, this is it? Damien glances toward the bar, his view partially obstructed by the blanched branches of bare trees. He nods cautiously, his anxiety threatening to surface once more. This is where she said the meeting would be anyway. Then let's see if it's unlocked. Sam breaks across the parking lot, motioning with his head for Damien to follow. Damien freezes at the edge of the lot and turns to and fro, suddenly hyper aware of his surroundings. He catches sight of the green rooftop of St. Petri and immediately whirls around, his heart dropping into his stomach. He sets off after Sam, his walk quickly shifting into a sprint. He rounds the corner of the establishment, finding the anarch examining the windswept sand several paces from the bar with his phone's flashlight. Sam fishes a long silver object from the sand and rises to his feet, aiming the beam toward his fingers. Damien cocks his head inquisitively as he approaches. A handle? Looks like an industrial one. Like the kind from... Damien and Sam exchange a concerned glance and turn toward the bar in unison. Damien clenches his fists struggling with all of his might to keep his trembling feet beneath him. The jagged remains of a dense wooden door swing back and forth in the intensifying wind, its splinters coating the grease-laden floors of the bar and spilling over onto the beachfront. Sam starts toward the door, wood and sand crunching beneath his boots in equal measure. He slows his pace with every step, carefully and thoroughly illuminating and examining every inch of the estate within his line of sight. Look around. See what you can... <coughs> Holy fuck! Fuck, what is that stench? He suddenly launches backward, nearly collapsing face first onto the splinters as he clamps his nostrils shut with his spare fingers. Damien lunges toward the door without a second thought, adrenaline flooding his system. The horrific miasma of decay and rot hits him like a sledgehammer, but he forces himself forward, grabbing the cell phone from Sam's hand. A stained and bloodied stone staircase comes into view, leading down into a sea of black. Damien banishes the darkness with the light and starts down the stairs, nearly losing his footing on something wet and slimy. He plugs his own nostrils as he reaches the bottom, the stench threatening to overpower him. He aims the beam at the floor, nearly dropping his phone on the concrete at the sight of a grotesquely deformed skeleton draped with the tattered fibers of a maggot-infested suit, a sense of perverse relief intermingling with his abject terror. Sam stumbles down the stairs behind him, freezing in disgust halfway down. So they fight. Ugh. What does that tell us? Does the corpse look like your sire? No. Vivian doesn't wear fancy clothing like that. I see. Well, the corpse at least isn't dry, so this one wasn't diablerized. Which is good. How old was your sire? I don't know, but she didn't act like that old, you know? So she wouldn't have disintegrated into dust upon final death. All right. So she must still be alive if her corpse isn't here. Look around some more upstairs. I'll keep investigating down here. Damien spins around and charges toward the outside world, nearly shoving Sam over the rickety guardrail. He loosens his grip on his nostrils and takes an experimental breath, his intestines immediately broiling in protest. He takes a moment to allow his body to adjust to the inhospitable atmosphere and turns his attention to the kitchen and U-shaped bar to his right. An assortment of wine glasses hangs from the series of racks over a wooden tabletop, upon which sit several white dish rags lined with shot glasses. The hum of the large refrigerator to the left of the grill and vent hood catches his attention. He shoves his hand into his coat pocket and pulls open the door to be greeted only by the bright white glow of a pair of small fluorescent light bulbs. He shuts the door and paces toward the bar, setting his sights on the cabinets below. He stops cold and spins on his heels, studying the kitchen with a renewed intrigue. Why would the owners keep the appliances plugged in while the bar is closed for the winter? He walks back toward the refrigerator and takes his cell phone from his pocket, switching on the flashlight. He runs the beam along the handle of the door, searching for any hint of grime. Finding none, he turns his attention to the glasses on the counter and hanging from the racks, slowly and methodically searching their surfaces for fingerprints. He steps away after several minutes, perturbed but undeterred. His foot strikes something light. 
Damien aims the beam at the floor, finding a single wine glass rolling back and forth in a self-tracing semicircle. He picks up the glass, instantly honing in on a bit of dried pink lipstick clinging to the rim. He shines his light inside the glass, his heart jumping at the sight of a drop of thick red liquid swirling around the stem. He puts the glass to his face and inhales, catching the faint but unmistakable aroma of iron intermingling with the sickeningly sweet smell of port. Sam! Is blood wine a thing? Yeah? Why? I think I found a glass of it up here. I'm coming. A loud shuffling echoes from the cellar. Sam bolts up the stairs, eager to escape the makeshift tomb. He plucks the glass from Damien's hand and tilts it upside down, allowing the drop to slowly carve a path through a thin layer of dust to his mouth. He licks the drop from the rim, his eyes alight with excitement. So, blood wine, eh? Let's see if there's a bottle of it around here. Damien regards the Anarch with amusement as he hurriedly reaches for the refrigerator door, nearly forgetting to cover his hand with his coat pocket. Sam jerks the door open and immediately slams it shut, rocking the entire appliance. He whirls around and kneels down in front of a mini-fridge beneath the bar. He pulls the door open and cackles loudly, withdrawing two unopened bottles of wine. He examines the labels, his eyebrows raising. It's Montrachet blood wine? That is one of the most expensive types of wine in the world. Definitely a sign that one of the camis was here. Also, I'll take these bottles with me. Thank you very much. So we know a cami was here. And that means the dead body upstairs is probably one as well, right? Sam gets to his feet, delighted with the score. Since none of our guys were here, most definitely so. Your sire is probably still alive and now has the camis coming after her, assuming she escaped. Damien turns back to the door, his blood running cold as a grim thought strikes him. Vivian must have done this. That means... He fights to perish the dread before the memories overwhelm him yet again. It was justified this time. She probably would have died if she hadn't let herself loose. Anything else we can investigate? I'll take a few photos for Derek. Otherwise, I don't know. If you have any ideas, just follow them. Damien nods and walks away from the bar without another word. He slumps to the ground in front of the establishment, examining the wooden splinters scattered beneath the windswept sand. His fingers coil around the silver cross against his chest, taking the weight off of his neck. He rests his chin on his hand, his eyes slowly closing. All right, photo's taken. Damien jerks awake at the sound of Sam's voice growing louder and less cavernous. He stands just in time to see the Anarch reach the top of the stairwell. Now, it's cleanup time. Damien recoils in disgust. Huh? Why? Are you dense? If someone finds an old, rotting corpse when this bar opens up again, don't you think they'll be a little suspicious? Damien groans mightily and lumbers toward him, momentarily wishing he could trade places with the shriveled Camarilla. 